there, I'm Chris with the Gnome Schoolhouse and Shepherd Industries. And welcome to the mill located in Kindred, North Dakota, soon to be moved on over into the school at Gnome. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the spinner because in, in our YouTubes, we refer to what have I been doing and I've been spinning. And, and I just I wanna show you a little bit about what that all entails. And this machine I'm going to walk through here now is, is a, a Sack of Lowell spinner. And when we bought it, it was 196 feet long. And of course we didn't need 196 feet. So we chopped it off, parted out the rest of it, we have here, oh goodness, probably 25, 20 feet. Um, and we have everything else parted out and we took the gearbox end and then fitted it with a new motor and, and here it is. And this is what we'll be moving to the school. And it all starts with, at the gearbox. I bring over the pin drafted fiber and we're gonna be spinning today. This is a beautiful brown Wakaya alpaca and it's it's gone through the pin drafter two times and it does puts it in a nice little neat coil like this and this is what we spin off of so now we're going to switch over to the gearbox because that's where it starts all right so this is our our gearbox end and this spinner has two sides and on this side of the spinner we can spin virtually thread thin yarn if we wanted to whereas this side we have a, a little larger gear on it so that we can can spin yarn up to a worsted um, our mill does not do bulky or chunky yarn we we spin up to a worsted it's we default um, if the customer doesn't know what size yarn they really want to go with then we'll we'll spin them a nice sport weight yarn three ply is, is what we default to. And what we have here is we have draft gears and then we have twist gears down below. And, I, and the draft gears are, we switch these out basically for every batch. And we have, we take these nuts out like so. And then we have the two gears. Now these two gears, the teeth are counted on each of each gear. And these two gears need to add up to 150. So I have a whole rack over here that has all the gears already paired. And it, it took me months to, to get what gear, what draft gear to use to, to achieve a balanced, even yarn. It did a huge learning curve here in this area of the spinner. But now it, it, I've gotten to the point where I know, okay, this customer wants a sport weight yarn. We're going to start with this draft gear and this twist gear. And what the draft does, I'll put it back on here. And there's little keys. The gears have little notches. And then on the, on this gear shaft, there is, uh, they're called keys that this slips right onto so that it doesn't slip. And then it just goes on there and we hook these on. And what the draft gear does is it determines how fast and how much fiber comes through and what, as it's feeding into the machine. If we're doing a worsted weight yarn, which is a the heaviest weight that we can do, we want more fiber fed in because we want, we want that a thicker yarn. If we're doing a lace weight yarn, for instance, because that is the thinnest that we can do, well, we can do thread thin. <laughs> we haven't had any requests for that, but, but a lace weight yarn, of course, we, we want a, a real slow draft on it because we want very little fiber going through. So then we, we tighten these up as such. Now we'll jump down here to the, to the, to the twist box. All right, now we are down to our twist box. And this, these two gears, again, need to equal 150. And they determine the twist. And when we go to the front, I'll show you which bars are spinning that determine that, that actually put the twist into the, into the fiber. So then these determine how fast that bar is turning, how much twist it needs to, needs to add to the, to the single. So if we're doing a lace there again, we need more twist because 
it's, it's much, much thinner, where if we're doing a worsted, we need much less twist so that I, I slow down the twist a lot. And this, and this is, is, they're changed in the same manner. These two come off and there's two keys that you just slip the, the new gears in. And now we'll move around to the front. Okay, so here we are at the, the, the spinning end of the, or the spinning side of, of, of the machine. And this particular machine is about 50 to 55 years old. So it has spun a lot of yarn. Now, how it is fed, I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and get one fed so that you can see exactly how we feed it. We take, this is the roving, this is Wakaya alpaca. It's um, a very, very fine fiber and the roving itself is, is a little weaker than if this were 100% wool roving because it doesn't quite have, the, the structure of the fiber is very different than, than the wools. So it doesn't hold together quite as well. So we put it up over the creel and on our finer fibers like alpaca, llama, um, bites in some of those exotic, real fine fibers, this creel is hooked to a chain up on our draft gear and it actually spins to help the fiber slowly be fed into the machine so that we don't have a break here. Because otherwise, if it's pulling and it wants to pull all the way from here, it, it, it can sometimes tear in the middle of it. So, so on these, on these rovings that are a little more delicate, we turn the creel on so that it, it um, turns on and, and aids the fiber roving in. So, and then we put it over this pipe here and, and then it's fed down into the machine and then I thread it. All right, now we have it flung over this, this, this first pipe here and now I'm tucking it into, it's a little cone that grabs the fiber roving and condenses it as it feeds it down into the draft and twist rollers. And the first roller here that we have right here is the draft roller. It is spinning at the rate and feeding the amount of fiber in that we want determined by what size yarn we want in the end. So it comes through and then these next two gears here, or these two bars here are the twist gear. They are taking that fiber in and twisting it and as it comes out here, it's, it's twisted and it, it's the single. And we use this, this is called a condenser. This is used to keep the roving. We put it, put the roving in there and it keeps it all nice and condensed af after it's been twisted. And we lock it into place. And then we have the little tuft sticking out right here. And now it's ready to be primed basically for lack of a better term, um, we're gonna turn it on and it's gonna spit out a little bit of roving and then it's ready for me to string the leader on, it's called, to, um, to get it spinning. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna turn it on now and see that. Okay, now we're gonna turn it, turn it on and we're gonna, we're gonna thread this machine and get it spinning here. Okay, now our fiber is coming out, our beautiful alpaca fiber is coming out and we're ready to, it's called the leader. And this is very similar if anyone out, out there hand spin, you, you start your, your hand spinning the same way. Is we need something for that fiber to grab onto and to feed down in, onto the tube. So I wrap this around as such. This is the tube that the single will be spun onto and put it on and now there's a ring here and we and then we have what are called travelers and i i use two different sizes i use a blue traveler which is a little heavier and then i use a green traveler which is a little lighter and what what they're doing is they are determining how tight it's being wound around this tube and as it's pulling down if i use a lighter one it, it needs to have the correct um, tension on it as it's winding onto the single. So we are doing uh, 
a nice sport weight, which is a kind of a medium weight. So I'm going to use this green traveler and this is my leader. So I'll go ahead. I'll take that fiber that has come out. I'll just give it a tiny little twist as such and turn the, mach the machine back on and it will feed it down into and get it started on the tube. And here you can see that the, the single is spinning and spinning beautifully. We have these three that have been spinning for, for a while. So the tubes are probably half full and we are, I have three spinning at the same time because we are doing a three ply yarn. So we're gonna take these three and we're gonna bring them to the plier behind you and we're gonna ply them together and it will create a nice balanced three ply yarn. And we're not gonna talk about the plying currently, but we could also do, if, if, if this was a bigger batch, I would hook six up or I would hook nine up, but I would have to do in increments of three so that the when there's less waste when I hook them up on the plier so that they, um, the tubes finish at the same time because they're spun together. Um, if I'm doing a two ply, same thing. I can hook, you know, two, four, six, eight up, what have you. So, but we're doing a three ply and it's a very small batch. So we just run the three. Um, potential problems for making it uh, an inconsistent or um, imbalanced yarn, et cetera, would be that there's too much, the roving is too thick. The roving needs to be of a certain weight, a certain size to be fed through. And another potential problem is inconsistent roving. If it's thick and thin and thick and thin, it can create, of course, thick and thin yarns. You're gonna get slubs, which are, are real thick areas to thin areas. And then there's gonna be a lot of breakage that will, and so the, the machine will break and then the, the single will have to get restarted in the same manner as when you started it to begin with. Um, uh, short fibers that create tiny little slubs, like little balls almost, like naps, that can occur. Um, weak fibers that even though the creel is running, this still breaks in between. Um, Surrey alpaca is notorious for that. It's super uh, mohair too, 100% mohair. Super slippery fibers um, that, that are very fragile in the roving stage. And often we're doing them in a fine yarn, a lace or a fingering. So the roving is a lot thinner to begin with. And you take that in, in, along with the slippery fibers and they can they tend to just want to fall apart. In the beginning, I have sat here for eight hours gently feeding <laughs> the machine with, with some of these problem fibers. Um, and now I just, I just, I don't have time to do that in and, and we just don't, if, if it's a, a, a fiber that isn't holding together, we just, we just don't spin it and we send, we return it to the customer in in the pin drafted roving form. But we will go ahead and turn the machine on and you can see it run. They're all running with a green traveler and it has been spinning beautifully. So we'll just go ahead and, and you can see now as the creel is turning, the fiber is slowly fed into the machine and it, it goes up and down as it evenly fills the tube just goes up a little bit more and it knows how fast to do it by how much twist it's putting into the fiber. So then the, the machine knows whether it's a thick yarn or a thin yarn. And it's spinning very beautifully. Occasionally there'll get a bit, there'll be a buildup on one of these rollers and we just take a, a blade to and just kind of clean it off. We always want a good tension. When we bounce it like this, we want to make sure it's fairly tight. Otherwise, if it's too loose, it could get wound around this, this um, guide here and then that breaks. Now, if we do have a break, this is what happens. And we go ahead and shut the machine off. And what would happen if we're working over on a different machine per se, and we don't catch the brake right away, it'll just continue to wrap around either the front or the back roller. And then we just, you know, clean it off prior to starting it. And then we take out, here's our leader down here. 
that I'm just going to go ahead and break off. And now we're going to restart this in the same manner, only we're going to use the spun fiber to do so. You will not notice this join in the fiber at all. It will just be seamless when we restart it. So we started in the same way. I just tuck it right behind there, pull off a little bit of the excess roving and just give it a slight twist. Make sure the travelers are tight, snug up against the, the single coming down and off we go. And when these tubes are full, we stop the machine and we take the tubes over to the plier and we fill three more tubes. And that is spinning at Shepherd Industries.